think about you know what it is, it's a distance hurling race. Mm -hmm. you know, you're running basically barriers or hurls. Um, so rhythm, lots of rhythm changes. Lots of rhythm changes, lots of uh, basically hurling and jumping over the water jump. And you know what comes, what you would think would come naturally to most people, uh, you know, is, is something you have to work on really hard to, to get your legs strong enough to handle it. Like I, my my example is always. If I asked you today, as a runner, to go and jump 28 barriers and seven water jumps without running 3,000 meters, I would how pass. would your legs? I would pass. I would pass right? And how would your legs feel? Well, if you weren't training for it specifically, if you weren't preparing your legs for that part of the event, mm -hmm. then how are you going to run 3,000 meters fast? You know, and a lot of people say, well, the Kenyans are not great hurlers or they're not great technicians, and I always say, well, if you can run 7:30, then maybe you can afford to give up something on the technical end. So, he kind of was the early practitioner, wasn't he? Yeah, and you know, and I've run races with Kenyans, and they don't have great technique, most of them. But again, you know, they obviously have good leg power, and they're very, you know, they can afford to give up strong that. cross country legs. Yeah. So anyway, but what we work on is just preparing the legs for that part of the race. And there's a lot of different drills that I've come up with, um, you know, from coming from a kind of neuromuscular and physiological background and a biomechanics background that you know. Uh, and, and being in the event that has helped me over the years, and you know, I ran the four Olympic trials, so you know, I was able to learn a I'm, lot. I'm surprised you mentioned that, Tom, because you were fourth in the trials. Was it twice? I was fourth in '92 and '96. Yeah. So those were those were close ones, but uh, you know, I was able to do a lot of. Uh, I was on the world championship team twice. And, and the point of it is, I ran 816. I did. I ran 816, 92 in the Olympic trials and didn't make the Olympic team. You could get in the team now with that. Yeah, I know, but uh, I'm, a still long way, I'm a long way from that. <laughs> I'm a real long way from that. So um, I think uh, you know the thing is, is that you know with Gag preparing uh, Delilah and Ashley as far as um, you know getting them ready to run, mm -hmm. you know, and then I, and I can really help with you know the running aspect and also the, the more important the technical aspect. And, and part of that is just being comfortable with it and and and, and uh, doing the, the drills and the hurdles so that you prepare. And then you know you, you uh, you're going to be able to run faster because of that. So I'm intrigued. At what made you both turn to the steeplechase? It's not everyone's event. It's challenging. You both have good cross country and backgrounds and track backgrounds. But what drew you to the steeplechase, Delilah? Okay. Oh, that was so many years ago. Um, <laughs> it was not too many. No, I think I became interested in it like literally my freshman year in college. I think now it's um, some some states have it as a high school event. I had no idea what it was back when I was a freshman at Columbia. Um, and then my coach, Coach Lake at the time, um, just thought that maybe I had natural ability for it. So I just tried jumping over a hurdle, and you know I came out the other side well, on two feet still. So she said, "Let's give this a go." And my first one was at Penn Relays, and um, that was a really fun event. And I didn't expect like the huge crowd at the water jump, like cheering and cheering the the fall. No, they're not there to cheer you. They're there to see you emerge <laughs> out of the water. That's, That's right. all that is. But I, you know, and I came out of that, and I wasn't traumatized, and I was like, that was actually kind of fun. So yeah, I stuck with it. Ashley? Yeah, I started the steeple in high school. Actually, um, it wasn't in our state championship or anything, but. Um, I just kind of pushed my coach and all the like Coach Lance. Lads. Yeah, Coach Lance at Colts Neck and I was like, maybe if I could convince you like I could try the steeple at nationals and so he said, Okay, like we did a few drills and stuff. You gotta race once before nationals and I raced with this like little me. I had never water jumped in my life. Right. I fell the first water jump I did and that's I guess why the cameras were there. Yeah. It's <laughs> helpful to like fall the first time and now I'm not as scared anymore, I guess. It was a good like shock therapy into it and then but I remember you ran, you ran the, you won the two miles outdoors in Greensboro. Yeah, and then, and then you came back and ran the steeple. Yeah, didn't you? yeah. And I, you ran the four by one mile relay as yeah. well. Wow, well, I remember getting up for that. Yes, and then she came back and ran the steeple. And, it was a big weekend. Um, <laughs> but uh, and I came in third, and it was two two k in, in high school. So then I took a break from steeple. Peter Farrell and I, you know, we didn't want to start off with the steeple. We wanted to like get some good base and run the five k. Things like that, um, and I convinced him to get back to it my sophomore year at uh, Peps, and um, from then on, uh, Peter's kind of similar in that he kind of just puts a hurdle out there, and he's like, "Okay, jump it. If you're not gonna jump the hurdle, like there's not really any point in continuing from there. It's definitely starting with that natural, like, complete lack of fear of just naturally jumping over it and then working on the technique and stuff." So. 